All right, welcome back to PacWest Bigfoot. This is David, and uh, I want to say first and foremost, a big shout out and a thank you to the fans over there at FolkloreSupply.com, FolkloreSupply.com. They have generously and most awesomely given us a coffee mug and a t-shirt that matches um, for us uh, in the giveaway for PacWest Bigfoot in the month of June. If you do not know who FolkloreSupply.com is, you can get on over there. And here's the deal. The coffee mug or t-shirt that has the uh, Sasquatch face on it with the trees next to it, and it's got all the different cool little names of Sasquatch from around the world, that's what I'm giving away. A good coffee mug with stuffed with a (laughs) t-shirt. Okay, so that's what we're going to give. Also, I wanted to say out there to you guys over at FolkloreSupply.com, thank you guys very much for being such fans. And also... I'll tell you this, I love that One-Eyed Jack t-shirt, and when those of you that get over there and actually check it out, you'll giggle like me and want one, so there we go. Anyways, anything else, any other news or anything? Um, Yeah, a little bit, Um, just wanted to let you guys know that I have um, some of the uh, uh, PacWest Bigfoot, uh, the logo is done, everything is done, getting ready to uh, finally get this stuff up and running for you guys many of you have been asking me for some pack west bigfoot stuff and i was like oh i gotta get everything <laughs> so finally <clears throat> after so long i've got this done so um it's awesome it's going to be great and uh, i hope you guys really really enjoy it mm. so i've got some fire crackling in the background i have some kids running around and crickets going and a great PacWest Bigfoot encounter story. So let's get to it. Bigfoot screams and bad smells at Fragrance Lake in Washington State. Fragrance Lake, Washington sounds and looks picturesque. It may even smell nice if you fall for the name. Well, until you are downwind of a Bigfoot that absolutely wants you gone and now. I had a sighting well, I saw a little bit of a large creature while canoeing on Fragrance Lake back in the early 2000s. Here is what I saw and what I smelled first and heard screaming at me. At least it felt like it was directed at me. Fragrance Lake smells like poo. I have been up here fishing and canoeing many times before. This is why I think that this particular Bigfoot was most likely passing through. Well, at least I hope so. I've since been back many times and have never had another experience like that one. But just so you know, I still get a little creeped out when I'm out here, alone, canoeing. This event happened back in 2001, and crazy enough, I remember the actual date being September 7th of that month, a Friday morning. I had a week left before we started up, which was rare, but being a private school teacher, we had not started school just yet. For some reason, I can't remember of, they would not start until Thursday the following week. That was okay, though. I was going to fly back home for a few days anyways and visit my family for the last time until spring. And by Tuesday, well, I would not be in class for a whole other week after a much more dramatic and saddening event happened that week that we all found ourselves in the middle of. But back to my encounter, and thank you for putting this together for me, Dave. As I said before, the incident and afterward many time, afterwards many times, I had been canoeing up at Fragrance Lake for years and without incident. Well, other than a crowd of people who would show up from time to time and ruin the quietness and tranquility of it all. No, I did not believe in such a creature animal as Bigfoot, but living and working in Washington State for nearly eight years by that point, I heard the stories of Bigfoot or Sasquatch. Being a math instructor, my knowledge does not go deep with biology or the animal kingdom at large, but what I can say is that you who have seen this thing or not, yet believe, you are right. It does exist. My sighting was a partial view, not a whole body, but I can tell you that it is huge, hairy, and stinks like nasty poo. But first, let me tell you what led up to the sighting and why my curiosity has been piqued about this subject to this day. A morning of rowing and funny smells. I got up there rather early, and being that particular part of the year, fall was coming on, it was a bit misty up there. But, 
It would also turn out to be a rather warm and sunny day the rest of the day. As I pulled in, I noticed there was a young cu uh, younger couple parked nearby who were looking as if they were headed out for a hike or a trail run. And I waved, and they waved back. I pulled my canoe off the rat top rack. Yes, that was a small canoe. And no, it's not made of wood. I still have the same canoe today. I locked the car, got what I needed in the canoe. It was then that I noticed a pretty rancid smell carried by the slight breeze that would come and go all morning. I thought nothing of it, of course, gave it up to a dead animal somewhere nearby and got into my canoe. Although there was a little breeze here and there, the lake itself was pretty placid. You could see the reflection of the morning sky and trees on it. It was really a picture-perfect morning. Well, for a little bit, that was. I was going to follow, uh, going to follow the edge of the lake all the way around it, and I even decided to troll a bit with a lure. I stayed no further than fifteen or so yards off the bank at all times. I went just fast enough and stayed deep enough to keep the fishing line from getting hooked on anything, hopefully. Well, at least a fish. I was in a little inlet when the smell came back. It floated on the wind that was, if I remember correctly, was blowing in from the southwest. Whatever was causing that smell was or seemed to be somewhere along the small well, I guess peninsula, if you will, jotting out from the rest of the forest. This time, however, I could really smell it. It was really strong and pungent. It was a dead animal smell, but mixed with garbage dump and onions, rotten ones. I have a garden at home, so I know what they smell like. It died off as quickly as the wind came and went. I kept rowing and looking along the shoreline and up into the tree line, but... I could see no carcass of any animal or anything along the edge of the lake. After a few minutes, a few moments, I actually had a small fish on, so distracted for a few by it, I reeled it in. As I said, it was small, too small, so I threw it back. For a second, thought I was seeing things or hearing things as I threw back the fish because when it hit the water, it was not a small little slap. It was a huge kerplunk. Actually, the sound was not the fish. It was a decent-sized rock or something like it that was apparently hurled at or near my canoe on the opposite side. <coughs> People throw rocks around here. That was the answer. And that was, answer actually had me getting a little mad and raising my voice to unseen faces. Hey! You almost hit me! I yelled. Things went silent. I looked around for a minute more, then figured the turds, or turd, who threw it was gone, and so I continued on with my canoeing and trolling, although I was still a little perturbed. There go the neighbors. The lake is hardly large. It's rather small, actually. In about 30 minutes, I was almost back where I began my morning near the launch. I was here for the whole morning, and well, into the early afternoon hours, I had decided, at least I was going to be. As I approached the launch area, off in the distance, I could see a, the couple who had parked there earlier and headed off for a trail run or hike earlier. At first, I thought they were just simply out of breath or something, but as I watched them for a few moments, I noticed they seemed to be acting more frantic than out of breath. Their attention was focused towards the east, over near the inlet where someone threw a rock near me into the lake. I thought perhaps that they had run into a the people or person, and it was not a nice encounter. I wish I knew the people. I would have loved to compare events. I was about to say something to them, or at least get their attention, but they slipped into their car and rather quickly uh, and sped off. That not only puzzled me, but looking back, it should have been a big fat warning. I kept rowing and passed the launch area. That is when the smell came back and things started getting even weirder. That smell. It smelled even stronger now, and whatever those people saw, well, maybe they ran into a predator with a kill, or almost became the next feast. That was not the case, however. And as a math teacher, well, what were the odds of having two of the craziest things, craziest things happen in my life happen so close together? I don't know. But they did, 
and the smell was getting even more and more putrid as I rode on. What did become apparent, however, was that whatever they ran into, that young couple, well, I could hear it now walking through the forest all of a sudden. The sound of twigs and sticks or brush breaking and cracking as it walked along could be heard, and from not that far away either. It seemed to be just inside the thick tree line and tall brush. I don't know if you've ever been to Fragrance Lake, but what you should know is that the forest and brush are real thick here, and that sun, and the sun there was that day, well, it still had a problem breaking through the canopy of trees, even on the sunniest of days, I bet. The smell did not disappear as I moved along the banks, neither did the sound of whatever it was moving through the forest disappear either. I kept walking, and that was real, the real eerie part. It sounded like walking, like on two legs. Two plus two equals Bigfoot. Like I said, I'm not a biologist, nor did I really study any of that. Just enough, I suppose, to graduate high school and get into college. I'm a numbers guy. I can care less about spelling out the word quadruplets <laughs> correctly, as long as I know what it stands for. And I'm telling you, 2 plus 2 equaled bipedal footsteps shadowing me just past the tree line. It would take a few minutes uh, or so before I noticed a break in the clouds again in some open area between some thickets and trees. Maybe I could see who this person was and give them that cold, dead stare I give students who failed the last exam. That would get them to stop harassing me, I suppose. But no, not even close. Next thing I knew, before I reached that clearing, another rock came hurling from the trees and just past my head, literally a foot to the left, and I would have been hit by a softball-sized rock. If it was a person, well, I was mad, mad as heck now. But as the water settled, this being a person came into question as a scream from the pit of hell itself came from the woods and directed right at me. When they say you can feel it, you know, people in their reports about them, well, they are correct. There is something to this infrasound I hear about, and today I study a bit about it on my free time. Anyways, this scream shook me to the bone, and I knew right then that this was no person nor do lions roam the forests of Washington State either, well, other than mountain lions. But I knew it wasn't a mountain lion. I thought for a second, once I gathered myself together, that this could be a bear. But that did not add up to that sound. And I am, as I said, a numbers guy. I was afraid, as I noticed, that the current, what current there was from the lake, had pushed me towards the shore after I stopped rowing. Immediately I dipped the oar in the water, uh, water faster than I ever have and quickly backing away from the shoreline. I could hear it move again and that is when I caught a glimpse of something I never expected to see in my, expected to see in my life. Bigfoot. Peekaboo. I see a monster. It never entered that clearing but it came close. After the scream I started th rowing backward about 15 yards off the shoreline I remember. I did not want to be close to land at the moment. That thing was not far away, and now it was walking again. I moved and positioned myself right in front of the clearing, hoping I would get a good look at whatever it was. I heard the foot, uh, the footfall and crackling and snapping of this thing walking along the forest floor, and still it sounded bipedal. Suddenly, it stopped, and I could see that it stopped just shy about ten yards of the clearing, however. It was sunny enough, though, and the trees were thin enough to see what was now leaning out from behind a tree and staring at me. I could not make out a face, but I could make out the half of a body of a large, well, person-like thing. It was not black, but actually it looked reddish-brown compared to some of the reports I've heard. And it did not look furry, just hairy, real hairy. You could see it almost flowing in the breeze. The face was too dark to see, and hair seemed to get in the way of it anyways. The thing was tall, really tall. I'm guessing, being a numbers guy again, this thing had to be at least nine feet tall, period. It stood there with its head that protruded straight out of massive shoulders, leaning out from a tree and staring right at me. We were in a stare-down for what seemed minutes, but only ended up being less than two, in fact. 
The breeze, once again, kicked up an awful smell of garbage, dead stuff, and rotten onions. The Bigfoot smelled horrible. Just then I found myself feet away from the shore again, and this thing looked at me and even seemed to be looking at the distance I was from the shore as it looked back and forth. That is when the poo I was smelling earlier about came out of me. I again and quickly, uh, and quickly started paddling backwards as fear, at a furious rate. I decided not to go back to the launch directly, just in case this thing is really stalking me. Instead, I would, I paddled around the bend and then sh I would shoot straight to, uh, to the launch and my car instead, hoping to fake it out maybe. I looked back as I finally reached the bend but saw nothing. All I experienced after that was another frightening scream, but this time from deeper in the woods and further from me. I shot straight across to the launch and literally kept eyes in the back of my head as I packed everything up and left, peeling out of in the dirt as I did. I saw Bigfoot, all of a nine-foot tall, stinky, massive, scary one, too. My drive back took me a while, plus a couple extra stops. I simply had to take a minute here and there, so I pulled over a couple of times and just played it all back in my head to make sure it was real. It was, and to this day, I am still in shock at what I saw, or better yet, witnessed. Life interrupted. So school was not to start for a, almost a whole week. And while the events of Friday were still freaking me out for the lack of a better phrase, I still boarded a plane for home, New York. I woke Monday morning to the hustle and bustle sounds of the city. And I can't tell you how much I did not, and to this day do not, miss at all. <laughs> I spent the, day with my, the first day with my mom and dad and my older sister, who, by the way, to this day still thinks I saw a bear. That day was a good day, though, and I started wrapping my head around the fact that I, uh, of what I had seen. Something of legend that was in fact real. Tuesday was early and the world was alive in the city as my sister and I sat there sipping coffee when we heard it, and briefly saw as, a plane, as plane number one hit one of the Twin Towers. We all know what happened that day, and how the second would slam into the other moments later. In less than a week, I would see a legend come into reality and what evil really looked like. Personally, I know what I saw. I saw a Bigfoot. And since then, since being back to the lake countless times, I have not seen, heard, or smelled a thing. But I know what I saw. And I know they are still around. I just feel it. Thanks, Dave.